The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Once again, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. This is Stars and Strikes Doubles as we begin our second hour on this Sunday afternoon. And we are at semifinal week. And that means we've got uh, returning from last week after a very successful debut for both of them, uh, Dave Kudermarsh and Dan Valcourt looking for two in a row. Yeah, they certainly didn't bowl like rookies last week. 4-16 for a triple. That's great in, in doubles. And uh, this week we got a mix. A uh, team of one bowl has never been with us before. Another bowl has been with us a few times. And, of course, the winners of this match today will move into the series championship match. That'll be next week against our top-seeded team. We'll tell you more about that a little later. But right now let's meet our bowlers for this semifinal show. First of all, our number three-seeded team, fresh off that big 416 a week ago. Dave Kudermarsh from Ware, New Hampshire, and from Croydon, New Hampshire, his partner, Dan Valcourt. Okay, Dave comes in averaging 118. The roll-off score was 630. And Danny Valcourt, 123 average, 619 for his roll-off score. And, of course, uh, by the way, talking about the winner moving on to the championship next week, of course, the winner also gets a chance to move on and perhaps qualify for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, which is uh, what all of these bowlers are shooting for as the weeks go on. But the two guys who will be trying to stop our returning winners are our number two seeded team from Dover, New Hampshire, Bob Mazur, and his partner from Loudon, New Hampshire, Steve Tierney. Okay, and Bob comes in averaging 122, roll-off score of 643, Steve Tierney 117 average and 617. Again, the... Runner-up team in this show will split third place money of $250. The winning team moves in to the championship show next week against our top-seeded team, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. We'll uh, give you a look at the ladder after we take this time out. we get three strings of Scotch Doubles bowling coming up here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, and we'll get it started right after these words. Don't go away. Well, once again, to review what's uh, gone on here the last two weeks, week one of this series, Paul Willits and Tom O'Brien came up with a big 360 to knock off our number four seed, the Barassa brothers. And then last week, Dave Kudermarsh and Dan Valcourt with the big 416 to knock off Willits and O'Brien. Now, of course, it'll be number three against number two. And then the winners of this match will move on to face our number one seeded team, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. That'll be next Sunday, but... But right now, the business at hand begins with Dan Valcourt, who, along with his partner, Dave Kudermarsh, had the strike ball working last week. They had eight strikes in their match, including two double strikes. Oh, he starts with a spare here. Last week it was a strike, this week it was a spare. The one, the two, and the seven. I might mention, I don't think we mentioned last week, but uh, I didn't misspell Dave Kudamarsh's name on right. purpose. Right. We just left the E out because that's as many letters as the computer will take. And two spares to begin for Dan Valcourt. Right where they left off last week. And now here's Bob Mazur who was with us just a few weeks back here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. He was paired with Phil Clough. They won their first match with a big 4-34 before losing to Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc. And of course, Bob has been with us uh, on many other occasions on our noon show, Campbell Pin Stars and Strikes. Oh, great effort. Well, oh, wait a minute, it is a great, oh, wow. I thought he had that coming over. Bob's overall record on two shows now, five and five. And he's got a 10 in the first. Bob from Dover, New Hampshire. Works for Visions Beauty Supply in Newburyport, Mass. And there is a strike in the second. Well, kind of all collapsed on that one. Dave Kudamarsh up for his first go-around of this match. 
filling the spare put up by his partner, Danny Valcourt. Big nine drop. He'll shoot at the six pin. He's looking at that, as Doug said, the six pin. Trying to cover that, make it three in a row. No. No. And again. Forty six through three. Just a little short. Trying to come up to that one three pocket instead. The half wish to right. Wow, missed the head pin and that's all he left standing. Well, two open frames for Mazer and Tierney to work on. They'll have a strike already up on the scoreboard. And it will be Steve Tierney stepping up for his first appearance here on Stars and Strikes and he'll work on a strike. Not a bad way to begin. Steve from Loudon, New Hampshire. Looking for the spare and doesn't quite get it. Good effort, everything but the five pin. We've had dozens of people from Loudon on, have we? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of those small towns just outside of Concord. Perhaps most well known for the New Hampshire International Speedway. Well, or Bowell's Bowling Center, which is only a few miles away. Yeah, but that's in Concord. <laughs> uh, you're right. They do a nice job up there at the International Speedway. Well, there's a funny leave. There certainly is. He's looking at the 2, the 7, the 8, the 9, the 10, and also the 6. Of course, Dan is quick to mention Boutwell's because that's where Steve does most of his bowling. As does, as does Dave Kudermarsh. Right. So, kind of a conquered flavor to this match. And another 10 for Steve. The difference is seven after the first four. Dan Valcourt now. Dan is very smooth. Very really little is. wasted motion. Two, four, six, ten left. Oh, very nearly cut the two pin over. Didn't miss that by much. All the different types of styles and deliveries. Good contrast in a lot of the bowlers here. Try to mention some of the the different styles. Of course, we mentioned Dave Kudamarsh's last week, as well as Danny Valcourt moving from right to left on the approach. Bob Mays is more of a cross lane bowler. Steve Tierney, his ball primarily straight, but it might back up from left to right a little bit. Be another open frame for the team of Kudamarsh and Valcourt. Dan trying to clean this up for a 10, and he does. 75 through six, and we'll take another look at that. He's pretty high in the wood, but the ball comes over and gets the 10 pin. Bob Mazur. Well, that could have been much worse. Had a good break when the seven pin, I think seven and the four went down. One, three, six, 10, five and nine, cluster of six pins. Just missed the head pin. Bob does most of his bowling at the Lamprey River Lanes in Newmarket, New Hampshire. Yes, and we'd like to welcome the Lamprey River Lanes to the New Hampshire Cantlepin Bowling Association. One of our newest members. Ten for Bob.
Big first ball, leaves a solid four pin. That wood will stay out of play. And Bob takes it. He's a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> a little extra body English there. He thought he might have gone by it. Well, that should pretty much even things up. That mark in the eighth. Back to Dave Kudermarsh. Four horsemen right, plus the nine pin in the back. Piece of wood nestled in between the six and the ten should help. Yes, carries the nine pin in the back. And he's to the left of the head pin, too. He pushes everything to the right. On the spare, pretty good looking ball. Oh deserved boy. more, deserved yeah. better than a diamond. Kind of walked the five pin over a little bit. Six on the spare. Now does this make this easier perhaps? I would think it would make it a little easier. But maybe not. <laughs> If you were with us earlier for Stars and Strikes this afternoon, you are familiar with our fully decorated set here at Park Place Lanes, courtesy of Director Victor Cross and our outstanding crew going all out here. Oh, that's yeah, a big, big ball by Steve Tierney, and it's on a spare. Gives them the lead, the team of Tierney and Mazer. Looked uh, kind of dicey for a moment there, the four and the 10. Anything over two will give them the lead. It's still 89, but. There you go, see? They had it all along. Yeah, they just got another ball to count. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a little off target to the right for Steve. He's right back in the pocket this time and that close to another mark. I'll give him the lead by seven and one more count in the eighth. The eight pins, and this will make it nine if he can clue this out for the 10 box. And he does. 108 to 99 through eight. They're waiting for you. No, Dan turned away from that ball. Yeah, pulled it to the left. Four horsemen and a nine pin. Similar shot that his partner, Dave Kudemarsh, had earlier. So he had the benefit of a piece of wood in between the six and 10. So after opening with a pair of spares, they were open for four other frames before getting a mark in the seventh. And now they've been open the last two. So nice 10. ten. Yeah. Excellent 10. Well, the team of Kudermarsh and Valcourt rolled strings of 120, 141, and 155 a week ago. And struggling a little bit in this opening game this week. Dan Valcourt trying to convert this 10 pin for the spare. Anyone off the wood? No. It'll be a nine box. That'll be a nine box for Dan Valcourt. So it'll be a 118. Tough when you have that double wood in the channel. It's actually, very difficult to get by. Actually, if he didn't have the double wood, he probably still yeah. would have gotten that 10 pin. Yeah. We've referred to this before, but that rule was changed uh, some time back. Double wood uh, used to be cleared. Uh, rather used than to leave it in, playable. then they used to yeah. take it out. Now they're back <laughs> to leaving it in. And They wanted to eliminate that controversy of whether or not the ball hit the pin, but then they have people traipsing down the lanes all the time, and that wasn't good, so went back to the other way. Spare up in the ninth for Bob Mazur. Leading by nine, plus this ball. And it's a pretty good one. He wants that 10 pin to go down. It's not gonna happen. Seven pin drop. 
four, seven, ten, piece of wooden, a couple pieces of wood near the seven and, and four pins. Now, I would go right hand tip, have it twist back towards the four and seven and off the wall. That's right where he hit it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, got it to fly over there, but not enough to carry the ten pin. Well, Mazur and Tierney will have the lead after the first game. And it will be a lead of 16, 134 for Mazur and Tierney, 118 for Kudamarsh and Valcourt. A little holiday music as we go to the break. Game two upcoming. Game two will be begun by Steve Tierney. Sixteen pin advantage, one thirty four, one eighteen opening games. In case you're just tuning us on. Can't imagine why you'd be just tuning us on now because uh, I've <laughs> been here since noontime. <laughs> that last minute Christmas well not last minute yet I mean last minute for me is Night uh, noon on yeah Christmas Eve but <laughs> me too some of that Christmas shopping and I just thrive on the pressure yeah me too I work better <laughs> under deadlines I always said that well, a little full that time for Steve and he made the correction he missed to the left the last boxes made the correction this time he came in a little full three six seven left Trying to split the three and the six. Incidentally, speaking of Christmas shopping, uh, pass along some ideas for Christmas gifts if you're looking for some for those difficult people to shop for. May we suggest a Tri-State Megabucks season ticket? Or perhaps a gift certificate from your nearby NHCBA Camelton Bowling Center. There's a strike for Dave Kudermarsh to lead off game two. A little hop there. He just drives the ball into the floor a little bit, drops a little bit, but the result is what he wanted. Crosses over into one two pocket and a strike. And if you watch last week's show, they had two doubles. No, it's almost another one. <laughs> of course, uh, Tri State Megabucks, our presenting sponsor here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. and. That's always a great idea for a gift, and uh, check into your local NHCBA Bowling Center and uh, pick up gift certificates for the bowling fans in your family. Dave's studying that seven pin, and he let it go. Dave's had a problem. It's been with singles. Mr. At least one last week that I remember, and a couple now today. Not missing them by much, but unfortunately, it's not like horseshoes. <laughs> Almost doesn't count. Bob Mazur on this way, fall, but it's going to go. Well, it was not an artistic success, but he'll like the result. The aim of the game is hit the head pin with the first ball and then see what happens. And you can see it just happening right now. Wood was all set up, toppled over, came forward. This time off the target. One, three, six, ten left. Now this looks good. Yes, spare on strike for Bob Mazur. There you see it, just splits the one and the three. Sixth mark for the team. Kudamarsh and Valcourt have four as Dan Valcourt steps up. He'll shoot at the four horsemen left plus the nine in the back. Pin still there. Not what you want to see happen. You want to see that pin go down with that very first ball. So they increase the lead to 14. That there. time he was on the head pin. 
strike in the fourth for Dan Valcourt. We'll take a break. Stars and Strikes doubles will continue in a minute as we take another look at that big strike for Dan Valcourt. Steve Tierney coming up to work on that spear put up by Bob Mazur in the fourth. Standing up just a little bit when he releases that ball. Gives himself a half dozen. One, two, seven, ten left. Going inside. Probably not the way he wanted to go. With the wood there. And it's a nine count. And a 61 half for the team. Remember they had that 16 pin lead coming in. It's at 20 right now, but of course, Dave Kudermarsh and Dan Valcourt will have a strike working when Dave comes up for his next two. Steve Tierney works as an offset stripper. He lives in Loudoun, as we mentioned, with his wife Tracy, who is here watching the action today, and their children, 13-year-old Lori and 11-year-old Michael. Steve qualified for our televised doubles go, tournament with a 6-17 in the roll-off. He leaves two open boxes with uh, Dave Kudermarsh already working on a strike. They're making a habit of this, aren't they? Certainly are. Every time they got one up there, you just uh, kind of expect this to happen. They just missed a double strike earlier with a nine pin drop. This time he carries the nine pin for the double. Look out. It's the six pin. And this is the one he's had the trouble with, or this type of shot, the single pin. And again, nope. And that has to start to work on you after a while. Oh, well, the double strike enables the team of Kudermarsh and Valcourt to take the lead, as you see, by 10 now in the match. Big swing right there in those two boxes. To mention one of our new sponsors to Stars and Strikes, Bob Mariano, Jeep Pontiac. And we all try to patronize as many as the, of the sponsors that we can. Of course, I definitely buy Megabucks. And I also have a Jeep Laredo from Bob Mariano Pontiac, right across the street from Boutwell. So go drive one of their new cars and stop over and bowl a few games. <laughs> Five bucks for Bob Mazur. 75 through seven. Barely this time. Could roll backwards. That topples over that head pin. One, three, six left. Oh, he's right on it. Yes. Bounces right back after that five frame. Dan Valcourt now. Leaving the five pin. And he'll have his chance at a single pin. Well, now that wood is going to travel a little bit. Let's I see if know. it goes all the way over. I don't think it will. All right, all right, all right, all right, go. Now you the bomb on it, Dan. Spare it up in the seventh. And the nine drop. And he'll have a shot at the four pin. Yes. 
Well, that's the way to do it. He had a nice guide on the left-hand side, right-hand side, two pieces of wood. So if he was going to miss it at all, he would have still covered that four pin. But played it to that side. That four, if he missed it to the right, would have caromed off the wood. Steve Tierney working on a spare in the eighth. So we can pick up the point of release with Steve. Oh, he stayed down that time. Ooh, and almost. he almost made the spare. One hundred with a box to go. You'd definitely like a mark here. Nineteen pin advantage right now, but this team of Kudamarsh and Valcourt still have a spare to fill in the ninth uh, in the eighth. Good looking ball that time, but it was full. Broke a little bit back from left to right, and as Doug said, came in full, left the seven pin, three, six, ten also. And look at this. Well, he's oh, got yes. it. Oh, on the seven pin. Great shot for Steve Tierney. And Excellent. they needed it, as you mentioned, Dan, in the tenth. Watch, he cuts this so fine, it almost deadens itself right there, but it's got just enough roll, hit it right square in the red line to knock the seven pin down. Could be a big mat, uh, shot in the match. Oh, you lost it to the right. Wow. Well, that's unfortunate right there. The two fill. It'll be 112 and 246 through two for the team. And Dave Kudermarsh comes up on a spare. And he and Dan Valcourt have a heck of a string working here. Oh, yes. Leaving the 10 pin. I think at this point, Dave is saying, give me a piece of wood in front of these singles. <laughs> <laughs> Look for a moment like he might have one on that one, but I don't think it's going to roll back into play. Even if it does, it probably would not be favorable. No, it's going to stay there. Will he use it, though? That's the question. Mm, not enough. Didn't use enough of it. That's three singles this game. This this could be uh, out of sight if, he, if they had picked their single pins up. But even so, they're at already at 143 through nine. Nine drops on every mark this game. The benefit of five marks, three of them strikes, and including the double and a double spare. I mean, five marks for over 150 game, if that's what it turns <laughs> out to be, is a is a, a fantastic game. Of course, the big element, the double strike. Almost converting the half Worcester. Well, Kudermarsh and Valcourt will have the lead going into game three. As they come back with a very solid middle game, which, as you said, Dan, could have been more. It could have been more. They have a 153 and a two string total, 271 for that 25 pin lead going into the third and final game. And we'll have it as semifinal week on Stars and Strikes Doubles continues in a minute. Time for the third game. To decide this match and to see who will go into the finals next week against Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. 25 pin advantage for this man we're looking at, Danny Valcourt, and his partner, Dave Kudamarsh. Well, right now we have a perfect example of how the marks distribute themselves and what you do with them. Right now, each team has eight marks, five spares, and three strikes yet. In that mix for Kudamarsh and Valcourt was a double strike, and that basically is the difference in the match right now. Five box though for six box rather for uh, Steve Tierney to start out. Pardon me for Dan Valcourt. Steve Tierney wants no part of that <laughs> <laughs> if he can help it. Well, it's going to be two open frames for Bob Mazer to work. Work on. He's going to start off this final game, and Danny Valcourt and Dave Kudamars decided that he would start, meaning Danny would start the match. So now Bob Mazer. 
Trailing by 25. Bob off the head pin. He'll shoot at the four horsemen left side. He made it on the right side earlier. One, two, four, seven. Looking pretty good. Oh, oh somehow left the that? four pin. It looked like the wood cost him. It must have. Must have. It must have deflected the ball around the four pin or something. We got the one, the two, and the seven left the four. Game four and count right here with the ten box, but I'm sure he's looking for that spare. Let's see how it happened. Take a look at that. Yep, the ball deflected right around the four pin. As a result of that wood, as you were talking about, Doug. And Target. again, Bob comes up a little short on the right oh. side, and look out. Just a ordinary eight drop <laughs> with the eight nine remaining. And not an easy shot. Well, probably not many will agree with me, but I think I would go to the left. Piece of wood farthest to the left on the right hand tip. Have it come off the wall. Yes. Or I would go at the <laughs> nine pin and snap the double piece of wood. There was many ways of playing that. <laughs> many. <laughs> oh. That's what makes this game unique. Dave Kudermarsh now. Make it interesting because now it's 20 pins minus the fill. And all of a sudden, uh, Few splits right. have run into you, team of Kudamarsh and Valcourt. Three, uh, two, four, six, ten. The runner-up team, of course, today will receive third prize money, two hundred and fifty dollars, and they'll also receive plaques from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchendon, Mass. The winners move on into the finals next week. Chance for the. $800 first prize and, of course, qualification for the Tournament of Champions coming up in the spring. One, two, four left for Dave Kudemarsh. Just nope. missed. Just missed the head pin. So they'll be open two more. So we could have a nail biter here. 10 box, 33 through four. Now, Steve Tierney comes up working on that spare in the second. Trailing by 20, minus this ball. Oh boy, left it to the right again. Just late with it. Has to regroup now. Point. He's really just rearing up right at the point of release. Leaving the ball short and to the right. That's what he wants to do. Well, they've chopped seven off the lead, so it's down to 18. And a chance to uh, slice a little more with a mark here. Better ball that time for Steve, and he'll have a, well, it <laughs> was a nice setup with the wood. Now, maybe not. And he's got the 3-5. He's just got to try to block out of his mind, go right at it. If you cap the wood, so be it, but you've got to give yourself a chance to make the spare. And that's what happens. He capped the wood and. Ten box. We'll take a break right here with Mazer and Tierney up seven right now. So they have, as you see, chopped a little bit off that lead. It's 18 right now, the advantage for Kudermarsh and Valcourt. We'll be back to settle this thing on Stars and Strikes doubles after these words. Six boxes to go. Dan Valcourt steps up, trying to get something started for his team. They trail by 18. Oh, it looked like he was going to be left with another split. The 4 8 10, the 10 went down, and now he's got. Did I say they trail by 18? They lead by 18. <laughs> Straighten that out right now. Oh, now he missed an opportune time for a spear right there and by capping the wood. So both teams letting some opportunity slip by. 
Yeah. That's a nine bucks. And they're open for five frames. Next week, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre come in. Top seeded team. Oh, no, it's, I don't think he, well, I think he really wanted that one to go down, but he's got a piece of wood. Now it's turning. He's gonna have to play the wood, hoping he can cover both pins. Mm. No, it doesn't cut kind of cover both of them, doesn't cover either one of them. So he's, they're gonna be open two more frames, so. They're opening the door. It's a matter of whether or not Bob Mazur and Steve Tierney can walk through it. Lead still 18. Bob's been having a little trouble getting his first ball to work. It's been on the head pin fairly well, but just a little full. I would think Bob would go after the two pin here with the angle of the wood. Comes out with a nine. But what they did was tie nine apiece in the fifth frame, and it's one less frame they have to work with. Still two marks behind. Wow. That was to left. Mark's very hard to come by all of a sudden here in this third game. Bob would like to get the two in the corner here to not lose any count, and he does. So the lead is still 18. Now four boxes remain in the match. Boy, it seems like no one has anything to shoot at in this game, does it? Two, four, seven, and the six pin. By the way, if you'd like to join us for a taping here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, we'd love to have you come visit us at Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire, right on Route 28, not far from exit three off Route 93. Near Canopy Lake Park. And finally, Dave Kudermarsh will have a spare leave as he has the two and the four with Wood. We'll be taping on Tuesday. It's coming Tuesday, December 17th. We begin at 9.30 in the morning and go all day long till about four in the afternoon. And there is Dave's spare in the eighth. And that could be very critical right there, Dan. The way this string is going. Each team now with nine marks. Steve really has trouble, seems to be on lane that lane 32. Bends that one in there nicely oh, and yes. kicks it out for a spare. What a great confidence booster that has to be for Steve Tierney. It's the difference of staying down when you deliver the ball as opposed to rearing up just as you release the ball. Well, this is a big ball. That looks good, too. Oh, yes, oh, how about that? Wow. Steve Tierney, who has struggled today, gets up there and goes spare strike in his final two frames. What happens now, the lead is seven pins. Hold your game, Dan. Here we go, buddy. Going to the final two with each team a mark to work on. Dan Valcourt will finish up for the team of Valcourt and Kudamarsh. This is on a spare, and it's just five. Here we go, Dan. Let's see a shot. Five will push the lead into the double figures. So whatever happens right now, unless he has a bad frame, Steve Tierney, and while well, it'll be Bob Mazer finishing up, he'll need at least one mark. Three, six, ten, four, seven on the left. Oh, wow, he almost got it and he missed the object pin, the two, which is still there, the three rather. Ten bucks, 85, 
with one to go. Big first ball, love to see that five go down. It will not, it'll be the 5-10. He would like a little better angle on that wood next to the five, but he's gonna be shooting at the red line and that piece of wood next to the five and hope he can cut the five into the 10. Very critical shot. shot here, yes, he's got it. Big spare in the 10th. This could very well go down to the last ball anyway, and that was a big one. Your ball, buddy. It's a big spare, that's only half the problem. Now is the fill. Whatever happens, Bob Mazur will have a chance to win it. Oh, big strike on spare in the 10th. How about that for clutch? We give them 376, so 130 will tie. They're at it. Oh, we wanted that seven pin to go down. Well, he's gonna have to make this. Ooh. He'll be in a double strike situation when he gets up. That's the importance of that spare strike in the 10th. That changed everything. Certainly did. He need a double strike and six to win. Be ironic if he did, you know, where the, the other team is the one that's been throwing the double strikes. <laughs> this looks pretty good. Hang on! Yeah, not over yet! It. There's one of them! Wow. <laughs> oh. It's not over yet, quite. Needs one more strike and then a six fill. Right here, it looked, didn't look like it was going to happen, then all of a sudden the wood came rolling across. Well, big ball here. Another good looking ball! Yeah, he's he got it! Oh my! Whoa. Now he needs six to win the match. Six pins on this ball will win the match. How about that? Unbelievable finish. Hoo -hoo. Wow. He needs six pins. Five would tie, six would win. It's in there again. Oh. And it's, uh, that's the win that's right the there. Last pin right there. Unbelievable. Six pin. How about that? Bob Mazur throws double strike six in the 10th. And there it is, by one pin, Mazur and Tierney beat Kudamarsh and Valcourt 377 to 376. We'll be back on Stars and Strikes Doubles to talk about this one. Here on Stars and Strikes Doubles is for Dan Valcourt and Dave Kudamarsh. We have uh, third place checks for you guys, uh, splitting $250 and uh, Oh, obviously not the way you would have liked it to turn out, but uh, Dave, why don't you slide right in here so we can get you on camera. And uh, uh, you had to think it was in pretty good shape when you rolled that spare strike in the 10th. Well, uh, we weren't mathematically going <laughs> to win the game. And in this game, uh, you never count your chickens before they hatch, I'll tell you. And when he threw the first one, well, that's when you really start thinking, you know. But it was a really good finish for Bob. and. Uh, I've been on both sides of that coin, and uh, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. Well, basically what happened was you guys didn't throw enough double strikes this week, so you only threw one this time. That wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, we were bowling a lot better the first one. We were just a tiny bit off this time, and it doesn't pay to be a little off. Yeah, a tiny yeah. bit makes the difference sometimes. Well, a terrific match uh, in any event. Uh, congratulations on the big win last week, and we hope to see thanks, you both Doug. again soon. Okay. Dan Maybe Valcourt and Croydon. Dave Kudamarsh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. All right, let's uh, keep the applause going now for Bob Mazur and Steve Tierney as they did a terrific job uh, coming back in those last four boxes. And uh, Steve, I know especially you must feel pretty good about this because you came up with the, uh, the clutch marks in the, in the seventh and eighth after you'd been struggling a little bit. That must have made, felt, made you feel a little bit better. Oh yeah, I fought <laughs> it all day. My ball was out in right field most of the time. But got him when it counted, I guess. And then uh, Mr. Mazur, uh, you knew exactly what you had to have and that's what you got. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's one of those things that uh, Steve put us in position. Like you said, without those two marks, we would have been pretty much eliminated, I think. So the last box would have never even come into play. But uh, hopefully we got our jitters out after this <laughs> one, and uh, we'll look forward to the championship match. Now, I know you had to have been thinking that that was going to be a spread eagle on that last ball. <laughs> yeah, when I left, left my hand, it looked like it was going in full, but fortunately some days you get the breaks, and today I was lucky enough to get one. 
All right, well, you are into the finals, as you say, next week. We'll be looking forward to seeing you guys next week against Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. Congratulations. Terrific match. This applause is for you, and we'll see you next week. And let's uh, take a real quick look at the ladder now so that we can, uh, again, set you up for next week's championship week as it will be Bob Mazur and Steve Tierney, the number two seeds, surviving, but just barely, Dan Murphy, by one pin and going into that championship match next week against Morgan and St. Pierre. Ironic how Dave and uh, Dan uh, lived by the double strike the last couple weeks, and this <laughs> week it did them in the last box. Great that match. Was, that was a terrific finish, and we hope that you'll be with us next Sunday, beginning at 12 noon, starting on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and then right here at 1 o'clock on Stars and Strikes Doubles. It'll be championship week in both shows. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Thanks.